Season one, episode one of The Walking Dead titled Days Gone By is one of those episodes of TV that just stands out among the rest. And I just finished re-watching the episode. So welcome to my first re-watch retrospective review of The Walking Dead. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about Days Gone By because it really is a solid return to form when it comes to The Walking Dead universe. We've seen so much over the years and The Walking Dead has become more of like a Marvel Cinematic Universe where the characters themselves feel like superheroes. They feel like they've overstayed their welcome. They have plot armor out the wazoo. So to return to the basics, to get to where it all began, as a reference point to the Robert Kirkman comics, obviously with the same issue of Days Gone By, it really is just great. It's a breath of fresh air. And going back and re-watching it has just, it's been so relieving. So we're going to be doing a ton of these, but this is the first one. And I got to say, in general, just going back to re-watch, like that opening shot of the gas thing where Rick is looking for gas, it just feels so different from what we got in later seasons of the show. This episode really did a phenomenal job of capturing that visceral horror of this haunted world that I think... I think it's what really set The Walking Dead apart in the earlier seasons. The shots of him looking for gas, not knowing what's going on to see a little girl that he doesn't realize is a walker, it's just so iconic in general. And, and, and that scene overall has really just left a dent in the universe of what is TV to come. But watching it in general just feels so different. Obviously, like any show out there, it takes a bit of time for it to find its footing. And I think this show kinda had that in a different way. With Frank Darabont at the helm to write and direct or whatever this show, you know what I mean, to just spearhead and show run it. Overall, you could tell it was just done right. It felt like a movie, which every pilot should. It really needs to establish the show at large. But it did so in such a way that was just, it, it was just right. It felt comforting for The Walking Dead, and it felt like a fair but different adaptation than what we would have got from anyone else. It just works so well, and you could see that from the beginning, where if you look at The Walking Dead's comics and the introduction to that story overall, it's it's so quick, right? So you spend only one page, one singular page of time in the world before the apocalypse, before Rick got shot. But in the show, you're swimming in it for a little bit of time. And I know that opening shot took place after the apocalypse, but it added that feeling where you get this establishment of this main character that you never got from the comics to begin with. Followed after that moment of Rick shooting the little girl, which is very iconic in the history of The Walking Dead, but after that, then you get to swim in this universe a little bit before everything goes to shit. So we have a really great dialogue scene that never existed in the comics between Rick and Shane that just to this moment really well established what everything else became, if that makes any sense. Like, you needed a scene with Rick and Shane being best friends and having like a family sort of bond together before the apocalypse in order to tell the story that they did and enhance things that they did later on down the road. You needed Shane and Rick bonding in that car and them stealing each other's sauce with the fries and all of that and them joking about women and all that. You needed that in the beginning and you needed that to establish the relationship overall and what happened with Rick. Whereas in the comics, it's literally, it opens on from what I remember, it opens on the chase and then Rick just gets shot and he wakes up in a hospital, period. There's like no dialogue. It's very quick. It's like, freeze, put your hands up, shoot, boom, done, apocalypse. Here, you get time to swim. You get to hear who Lori and Carl are. You get to see the dynamic between Shane's personality and Rick's personality. And then you get to see what happens when inevitably Rick gets shot and Shane cares for Rick. You get to see that dynamic unfold and it's so important to tell. It's so important to see. And mind you, with all that, one of the best things about this is I just love the original look 
of the show. It's a look that, yes, we still kind of have, but because the early days of the show was shot on film instead of digital, you get this really sharp film grain that I guess to some may be a little overbearing, but it worked so well for an apocalyptic, uh, an apocalyptic story to have such gritty, gross looking film grain. It told the story so well, and somehow with the background of the locusts and the cicadas in the Georgia summers, you know what I mean? Like, it just paired so well and just looked so right on screen. It told such a beautiful story, and I wish the whole show all the way through season 11 was shot on that film, but I think it was in the the 10C episodes, those like those COVID episodes that we got, that's when they switched to digital. I just wish we stuck with it the whole time because it was just so good. And even the score, it goes to that as well. It was just so well in this episode with Morgan's story and you have those like that holy sort of like, I don't know how to describe it, but that music that played over top of the apocalypse is just, it fits so well. And while I'm also at it, I loved the original intro to the show with the pictures of Shane, the pictures of Laurie and Carl, and sure, I guess it technically had to evolve over time, but only because they decided it had to evolve over time. The intro was really cool in the early days, and it's something that I wish we still had. Like, I genuinely do. I loved it, and I think it was... I, I really do. I think it was great. But after that whole introduction and after that whole sequence, we get the best few moments of TV history, which is Rick waking up in the hospital bed. And that's something that is just so special. I mean, obviously to this day, it's been memed to all hell, like with Rick getting out of the bed and all that stuff, which is fine. It's just, it's just so fun to see. It's so great to see that sort of story. It feels like 28 days later, you know what I mean? Like after the apocalypse, but it really was cool to see Rick waking up in a hospital bed that was empty. The hospital was completely empty and having this fish out of water story of Rick not knowing what the hell is going on. It's so absolutely amazing. And it's just so weird to see Rick in that state of mind, knowing everything that's happened to him since. Like, it really is crazy to me. But just in general, the hospital sequence is just so incredible. It's a moment that I could go back to a million and one times and never get sick of. It did such a good job of capturing the horror in the Walking Dead's universe. It really did, and it was so well needed. And while I, of course, had some questions there as to like how Rick even survived when every single other human in that hospital died, and yes, they showed us the episode or two later where Shane put the bed thing in front of Rick's door, but like any military person who ran through that hospital could have easily just been like, oh, clearly there's a bed in front of this door. We're going to go in there and kill whatever's behind that. Like, you know what I mean? That, that was obviously like plot armor, but it's what Robert Kirkman set out in the comics. So you have to adapt it somehow. I'm glad they at least showed a little bit of backstory later on for that. But overall, it was just looking back, it's still one of those moments in The Walking Dead that is just so iconic. And I, I guess that's to say the whole episode itself is. There really isn't a moment of this episode that I don't care for. If there is one, it's, I guess, the Atlanta stuff. I feel like that's the only stuff within this episode that felt a little slow to me, but you needed that. Like, I, I would never say you should take that out because it was 100,000% necessary to tell that. You absolutely needed to do that, but everything before was just so good. Like, like for instance, my favorite portion of this episode is... Yes, it's the hospital sequence, but it's also the introduction to Morgan and Morgan explaining the apocalypse to Rick. That is just such an iconic sequence. We're going to get to that in a minute. But of course, we have Rick going through the hospital and we have Rick losing power in the hospital. So he has to use the match to go down the steps. And I love the small details. Like when he's in those steps, he smells how disgusting everything is. I love even before that, when he looks down the hospital and he sees that dead mangled body and his fear on his face, or when obviously the don't dead open inside doors open and you see the hands like peeking through. I loved his visual horror, like the, the scared look on his face. 
it is all stuff that I feel like was kind of like a one and done in The Walking Dead. Because after that, we see a hardened Rick throughout the whole show. So seeing those reactions, it's just so great to see because it's human. If any of us were in that environment, in that situation, we'd be shitting bricks even more than Rick was. I don't, most of us wouldn't even make it. That's just the honest to God truth. But it's so crazy to see. And it's a one and done sort of thing. And the set pieces were just so good from when Rick is in the hospital to when Rick is outside of the hospital, sees all the helicopters, all the military gear, all the dead bodies. It's just, it's so well done. Even down to when Rick is going onto the bike and he sees the walker that is split in half and he realizes there are dead people walking and that zoom into his face felt so similar to the comics and what we got with his look back and all that. It's just so good. It really is awesome to see. I loved every bit of it, but then we get what is my otherwise favorite parts of the episode. Rick goes back to his house, realizes Lori and Carl aren't there, and has an amazing breakdown, which is Andrew Lincoln at one of his best, as always, because Andy's such an incredible actor, but then when he comes out of the house and Dwayne hits him over the head, that is where the episode became something that just hooked me. The talks with Morgan asking if he got bit, the talks with Morgan just talking about what happened and the overrunning of society and the fever that'll get you and all of that stuff, it's so iconic. And that's the stuff that I wish we could just swim in, in The Walking Dead forever. Those little conversations about what's happening and things like that. That is the story I want. Like, I would love if we could just go back in time and have a story of Rick, uh, excuse me, of Morgan, Dwayne, and Jenny at the start of the outbreak. Instead of that Fear the Walking Dead bullshit we got later on in the show, if we could have a story that is told for the beginning of the apocalypse with characters like that discovering this in the beginning, discovering Atlanta and realizing they were trying to get to Atlanta, but Jenny got bit, so she had the fever and all of that stuff, and we saw the outbreak outbreak and we saw all of that from like that perspective that would be so amazing and it's something that instead of all this bullshit spin-off stuff we've been getting in the walking dead god if they just did that it would be so incredible i mean it doesn't have to follow morgan and all of that but the point i'm bringing is those moments where you have morgan explaining the apocalypse and like you feel that you know what i mean those are the moments that are so killer in The Walking Dead that I just wish we got. It really is so awesome. And even with things like that, it's such a small detail, but later on in their conversations, Rick is explaining to Morgan that he thinks Lori and Carl are alive because clearly the photo albums are gone and no robber would take those. And I, it's such a small detail, but I love that Morgan is explaining how Jenny did the same thing. And as he's explaining it, he just stops and like has to catch himself because he's about to cry and all of that. Those details are just so good and details that I wish every episode of The Walking Dead had. This one obviously felt more like a movie. It did what a good pilot is supposed to do, where it's supposed to tell a very visceral story to hook you. It did that. And those moments are just so strong. And even the moments of Rick, Carl, and uh, excuse me, Rick, Morgan, and Dwayne showing up to the uh, to the police station and getting the guns and showering. Those are moments I love to see in an apocalyptic story. I just love them. And I love all of their, I love like all of their stuff. And that's why I love Morgan so much is he's just such a, he's just such a fun character with his his drama and his reaction to things and his everything he's just he's great to watch he makes for an amazing story you know what i mean and it's just it's just crazy to me and one of the details i love in there as well is rick is as he's kind of getting back on the road to recovery rick is trying to kill a walker with a baseball bat and it takes him like 15 swings of that bat before he could actually kill the walker it's so funny to see that now in season 11 and like in The Walking Dead, the ones who live and all that stuff, Rick could literally just stomp on a walker with his boot and explode its head. Like, that's so unbelievable. And then you have this where he's hitting him with a baseball bat, hitting the walker with a baseball bat, and he just can't kill him. And I understand it was partially because he was wounded and all of that stuff. Sure, yeah, I get that. But in the same vein, 
it's just so believable to see that he can't kill a walker with one swing of a baseball bat instead of literally stomping on their heads. Like, come on, let's get real. You know what I mean? But overall, that's what I really like about this episode. It took a really great story from Robert Kirkman's first issue of the comics and told it in a way that just worked for the TV medium. And that's why Frank Darabont was so great. Overall, this episode was just so strong. It really was. I can't wait to do more of these retrospective reviews of The Walking Dead as they come. I'm so excited to discuss them further, but I want to know from you, what are your favorite moments from days gone by? Let's start a healthy conversation down there in the comments. And with all that out of the way, thank you again so much for watching this video. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.